The Samsung Exynos 1000 finally defeats Qualcomm Snapdragon 875. What's up guys, we are back with some latest Samsung news, we got some exciting Galaxy S20 FE hands-on look, some more S21 Ultra leaks, but first, let's talk about the headline, which is the Exynos 1000 absolutely defeating Qualcomm 875, not just in one phone, but in two separate phones. It seems like we have heavily underrated Samsung's next big thing. After the big disappointment with the Exynos 990, Samsung has finally had it enough, and they decide to take down Qualcomm on its own, without AMD. According to the leaked Geekbench 5 scores, the Exynos 1000 beats Qualcomm 875 in both single and multi-core scores. We have a pretty noticeable difference in the scores. The Exynos 1000 not only beats 875 in the Galaxy S21, but also in Xiaomi Mi 11. Both Exynos 1000 and Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 are octa-core chips. We have one Cortex-X1 ARM super high core, 3X878 high performance cores, and finally four core Cortex A55 low efficient performance cores. They both are using Samsung's 5 nanometer process, but Exynos 1000 is reportedly clocked higher than the Qualcomm 875, which may be the reason for its edge in the CPU scores. Again, this is purely CPU scores. We don't know how much the difference there will be when it comes to the graphical performance. Samsung will be utilizing the latest ARM GPU, the Melee G78, which is a 16 core GPU, whereas Qualcomm 875 will rock Adreno GPU. In my opinion, Qualcomm might have an edge when it comes to the GPU performance, but I still feel it's gonna be a very close battle. Now, Exodus 1000 destroys the existing Qualcomm chip by a mile if we compare the scores with the Qualcomm 865 chip that is currently the best in the Android right now, or the A65 Plus for that matter. In comparison to the A13 chip inside the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the single core is on par, but the big gains are in the multi-core score. That's because Exodus 1000 is a 8-core chip versus the 6 cores on the iPhone. Since A14 is also a 6 core chip, it might also lose to Exynos 1000 when it comes to multi-core scores, but it might be better than the Exynos 1000 when it comes to single core scores. Again, everything will be revealed officially by Apple in October. So seems like things are back on track. Samsung has learned a big lesson with the Exynos 990 drama. Still to this day, they haven't mentioned or admitted that Exynos 990 is not on par with Qualcomm 860 which is very very obvious as we have talked about this issue time and time again but I'm pretty sure they don't want to repeat the same thing next year which is why Samsung is doing everything they can to bring the Exynos 1000 on par or better than the 875 without AMD GPU. Speaking of AMD GPU according to ISO Universe in 2022 Samsung will be implementing the AMD graphics with its Exynos CPU to become the best smartphone chip maker in the world. Also in the news we have actual hands-on look of the Galaxy S20 FE. It's slightly disappointing because the bezels are even bigger than the Galaxy A51. I mean, on one hand, we're getting 120Hz display, but on the other hand, the bezels are just not that attractive. I would prefer slightly thicker bezels with 120Hz display over a slightly slimmer and 60Hz refresh rate. That's just my opinion. Overall, it's gonna have the Galaxy S20 specs, S20 camera, S20 internals, a lot more colors, plastic body, a very attractive room $700 price. It's a near perfect Samsung phone that you can recommend to most people. But then again, if you can buy the original Galaxy S20 for this price, then definitely, definitely go for that because that's just a much better value. Now, the final news of the day is regarding the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's rumored to retain the same battery size as the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which is 5,000 million power battery. But the difference this time around is that the LTPO tech will be there combined with Android 11's intelligent refresh rate switching. Plus the 5 nanometer process is definitely going to be a super efficient beast. So that's all the latest news. I have to say I am super excited and optimistic for the Exynos 1000 chip. As always, I'll keep you guys updated with the latest stuff. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.